Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Elite Dangerous. Now, the 1.6 or 2.1 beta has been released. If you are a backer at, that backed for the beta access, then you will have access to this now. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the redesigned mission uh, interface. Now you actually interact with characters who represent their various organizations. This is Manager Sarah Hewitt. They have portraits. Uh, this is... Councillor Ellis Goff, I am pleased to make your acquaintance, Commander Scott Manley. I am Ellis Goff, and as Councillor, I am I here to help you. The system's economy is strong and business is booming. So the missions themselves will tell you that they will give you uh, plus reputation, plus uh, influence. They'll tell you that hostile ships may come against you. you. They're basically much more explicit about what could happen. The portraits... Well, the portraits are kind of there. This uh, They haven't had character portraits except for the major powers in the game. And ultimately, they are planning on introducing a you know the ability to create your own portrait for your own character. So this is kind of the first iteration of this. These are all using the in-game portrait system, but obviously uh, there's a lot of procedural choices and stuff going on, and I'm guessing they will collect bug reports from people that think the characters look dumb. I don't know, it, it's definitely putting a nice face or a familiar face on things. It makes the mission interface perhaps a little more, a little less cryptic. Just looking at some of the other characters here, I think, yeah, <laughs> uh, I think there might need to be some more work on the character generator. But yeah, regardless, yeah, it's pretty much the same mission interface that we've been playing with. So I've just picked um good old fashioned, uh, good old fashioned delivery, some courier missions, and let's head out here. So yeah, if you have only the base Elite Dangerous, you're only going to get the features from the 1.6 expansion. And that is the new mission interface, new NPC faces, your persistent NPCs. There's a whole lot of balancing for combat weapons. There is vastly improved enemy AI, apparently, and I believe it because I was killed quite brutally by some of it earlier. Oh yeah, and it, speaking of killing things brutally, they've added huge and large weapons that are, um, well, for those people that have the really big ships. And if you want a small, fast ship, there are enhanced performance drive modules as well. So yeah, the mission results screen gives us a whole lot more information. It does sound like, it does feel like we've done and accomplished something here. It shows us your reputation changes and your effects and all that. So uh, it's a bit more informative. But for those of you who have bought into the Horizons expansion, the main thrust of this is going to be the engineers. Now, the engineers are a bunch of very special NPCs, and it, I've just loaded this up and you can see that they've actually sent me messages they're telling us please come and check out my awesome stuff uh you're gonna well this person is offering to teach me more about my weapons the dweller will just say we can assist each other elvira martuk and felicity Fre farseer is a an explorer so yeah heading over to the black hide where the dweller lives on weird weird a2 he has a base inside this crater. It's unfortunately night, so kind of have to look very carefully to see what's here. There's a bunch of bio do domes down there, and as I understand it, he liked to partake of the onion head. Oh yeah, that's another feature that got added for everyone. There's a lot more comms chatter when you're uh, docking and things like that. Uh, they've added a bunch of different voices from different regions, different accents, and yeah, it definitely enhances the atmosphere. Docking procedure completed. Ship secured. Greetings, Commander. And greetings to you. I would like to see your head engineer, a mysterious figure known only as the Dweller. Uh, after I refuel and repair my ship, I accidentally flew a little too close to a star. That happens during hyperspace sometimes. Now, before I go to the engineer, I guess it's worth pointing out, again, something that everyone can get access to. The fitting screen has been, well, has ha been given a huge overhaul. Obviously, I'm being made to stand by for a really long time because it's running on a tiny shard of the real server network. 
And yeah, we have all the different parts, out, all the outfitting here, all the numbers, all laid out. I think it's a little clearer, all the same. Uh, <laughs> may not be clear to some, but you have a lot more of the magic numbers that tell you how your weapons work. And I'm sure there'll be a ton of people theory crafting their way through the significance of all these different, I these different numbers and everything. Um, yeah, look at this, my power adapter or my power distributor, you can see the the boot time, weapons capacity, these are all, if you change them around, you can see the different parts more easily. So, uh, it's another example of a you know, bit of uh, quality of life improvement that everybody is getting, even those that haven't upgraded to Horizons. And, uh, you know, if you're a Mac user as well, you still haven't got Horizons because of a shortcoming in the OpenGL shader uh, that doesn't allow compute shaders to do the landscape. Uh, yeah, I'm Hoping that gets fixed at some point. But yeah, everyone that hasn't upgraded to Horizons gets a bunch of extra features, bunch of extra missions. And everyone that does upgrade to Horizons, well, they get the Engineer's Workshop. And that means that they can access all sorts of new features. The Dweller is a mysterious contact in the Ad Agnipe network. No one knows his background but I can see his portrait now. And he and his small group of mysterious like-minded individuals closely guard his identity and that of their best customers. He is renowned for custom modifications for local criminal elements. He is known to help outsiders who have the right contacts and operates an extensive workshop facility. And to get access, you have to donate a bunch of credits. And the donation interface is a bit funky. You have to donate 5,000 and you have to click uh, easier to actually just click to the right and then complete this. That's what I figured out, by the way, just in case you're wondering. 5,000 credits and then you get access to all his toys, or at least you get access to the grade one toys. Now, the idea with the engineers is it's kind of like a crafting system where you have to go to specific people that really know the inside and out of hardware. So I can come here, this guy will look at my power distributor and burst lasers. So yeah, please look at my power distributor 4F. And he's going to tell me, look, I can do this particular version, which is a high charge capacity browse, a power distributor. And it improves the weapon of energy flow rate and a few well-chosen com compound enhancements. Uh, so yeah, you see there's some downgrades, some upgrades. There's a bit of rebalancing, basically. This is for people that really want to tune their ships to get the maximum out of them. Now, the cost, the cost is all these little uh, micro-resources and bits and pieces, right? So these are, these are things you're going to end up finding and face. Uh, some of them, of course, you can already find on planetary surfaces, such as the chromium. Chromium has been a thing that you've been able to get in your little SRV. And the basic conductors are a new item. I think they're a new item. I'm presuming they're a new item because I haven't found any yet. So, uh, weapons-focused version, a shield-focused version. All these features are nice to have. Burst lasers. So, I guess this guy, this guy tunes all off the weapons, or at least he's tuning the laser weapon. So I can improve the thermal loading, I can adjust, the, which reduces the damage per second, but I guess it makes it last longer. We can uh, increase its range. We can do over range, overcharged weapons, we can do short range, more power. All of these are options for people that want to fine tune, and I'm sure there will be a bunch of people really working hard to figure out the exact perfect setup for their favorite spaceship. Anyway, let's go out and try and find some of these strange new materials. Perhaps we can, well, perhaps we can upgrade something. I've no idea if it would be a good idea, but I'm gonna go out looking and seeing if I can find them just to see how easy it is. But first, I'm gonna take a look at this really interesting looking base. I, the biodomes, I believe, are new features that haven't been in the, their scenery which I'm not sure if they're exclusive to the engineer bases, but they certainly, I don't think they've been seen in many other bases, at least this color. I'm guessing this guy is growing uh, the finest strain of onion head here. I'm wondering if that's where he gets his inspiration for those wonderful toys that he creates. Not gonna make any presumption one way or... Oh wait, no, he's growing Christmas trees. This guy's really Father Christmas, I'm sure of it. 
look at that. It's kind of interesting. I always think it's funny, uh, or it's interesting moving under gravity. The spacecraft feels so much heavier. Anyway, after leaving the planet, we start heading out into deep space, picking up some speed. Our sensors are scanning, looking for interesting things that might contain the rewards we were looking for. And we find an unidentified signal source really close to the planet, which is kind of convenient, you would think. So what have we got here? We have a bunch of bad guys. We have a Sidewinder, Jervis Priestley. Mostly harmless and wanted. Here's from the Weird Raiders, and he is going to be the member of the Dead Raiders very, very soon. All weapons lined up. Going to fire everything. There, you see, bringing out the multi cannon as well. Oh, yes, 47%. He is not going to last long. More lasers, more lasers, more lasers. And. One, zero, excellent. Small amount of bounty for that. I'm wondering if that's extra small just because it's in the beta and ship costs are different. Tim Crowther. Hmm, I wonder if that's any relation to the Tim Crowther that wrote video games in the 1980s and 1990s. I'm wondering if that could be him. I mean, there are actually a bunch of pretty well-known game devs that back this game. Because, you know, every game, all these game devs really like Elite. It's such a magnificent uh, landmark in gaming. Okay, Tim, I don't care if you made some awesome games, but I'm going to kill you. And down you go. Now, we have killed these things and they have dropped some stuff. So, some of the stuff they've dropped isn't cargo. And it doesn't have the stolen cargo flag or anything. Oh, wait, we still got Paul Bailey. Is this... An individual we want to care about? Oh, they are Paul Bailey. Mostly harmless, soon to be mostly dead. Weird Raiders. Zero. Ah, yes! Nice! Nice! I love it how his shields came up just as he exploded. Yeah, better late than... No, it's actually, it's not better late. You... <laughs> you should have got your shields up faster. So this is Phase Alloys. And those are chemical storage units. Okay, let's try and go for one of these things. Now, they're not like cargo canisters. They don't have the stolen flag. But one mistake that I made was picking a signal source which was really close to a planet. Because it's close to a planet, gravity will pull these things down. And due to a little... Due to some odd behavior in the game... If you're pointing your spacecraft straight down, say because you're chasing something into a gravity well, it becomes really, really wobbly. And I'm not sure why, if this is a bug, if it's something to do with their coordinate system, but it is very, very annoying because it makes it very hard to pick up any cargo that drops when you're near a planet. There, are we gonna get this? Nope, no, we're not gonna get it. It's gonna run away from me. Come back, I tell you. Thank you. So we have discovered a new material, phase alloys. And yeah, because everything's falling down, I totally failed to pick up anything else. Good news is, if you go out into deep space, you can find all sorts of things. So I found some flawed focus crystals. These are just stuff sitting around in wrecks, and no doubt there are many different places to find these items. The game, or sorry, the Horizons release apparently is also adding ice mining as a zone that you can, you know, mine. And I'm not sure if that is coming to 1.6, but I would imagine since it's in deep space that that would work. I'm not sure how these kind of commodities, these uh, crafting things, work since you can pick them up in deep space, but I think to use them, you have to meet an engineer. So I'm not sure there's much point picking them up, but perhaps I misunderstand. Anyway, not only are there things that you pick up, you can actually go and fly up close to spacecraft and perform shield scans. And this gives you information such as encoded, untypical shield scans, which are kind of like commodities that are needed to help it make improved parts. Anyway, I'm just going to visit another engineer on the edge of space. I will proceed to landing pad 02. Again, I think that's the same voice as the last time, but there are multiple voices for the space traffic control. 
Uh, there look a lot more biodomes and things like that here. Long Sight Base, and this is the base for Elvira Martok, is a well-known explorer, though she is rumored to have once been a deadly assassin. And uh, yeah, she's invited, I deal with the exotic and the unusual. I have an interest in alien items and other alien or unidentified artifacts. Currently, I am attempting to debunk the myth of fish. So bring me more from my research. You have to bring her three tons of fish and she's in the ass end of nowhere. So uh, she didn't actually come up in any of the uh, in, in any of the databases. So I have no idea where to get fish. I just thought I'd show you Elvira Martuk. I will no doubt find out more about what she actually does. I have contact with four engineers right now, and as you unlock other stuff, there's ways to get. I think there's like 20 engineers in the game, and they have different contact requirements. So yeah, for those of you in the late beta, go and check it out. Uh, find all the bugs and make sure they get fixed before release. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.